The kidneys, a bean-shaped organ located at the rear of the abdominal cavity in the retroperitoneal space. If you look inside the kidney, you will see that it has an outer region, the renal cortex, and an inner region, the renal medulla. The kidney has four main functions. Excretory function, regulatory function, endocrine function, metabolic function. First, let's talk about the excretory function. Excretory function involves excretion or removing of metabolic waste products eliminated in urine like urea, which is the waste from protein metabolism, creatinine from muscle metabolism, uric acid from the breakdown of nucleic acids, bilirubin from the breakdown of hemoglobin, and some foreign substances such as drugs and toxins. In a clinical practice, in order to determine the functional capability of kidneys, you have to take a look at the urea and creatinine level of the blood. But you have to know this very important point here. In a case of dehydration, when a patient is hypovolemic, you may find increased level of urea in a blood, which is called uremia, whereas the creatinine level stays normal. The reason for this, as quoted in popular medical textbooks, is that there is increased reabsorption of urea by the kidneys. Again, uremia does not tell us that the kidney is working properly. Therefore, blood creatinine level is the gold standard to determine excretory function of the kidney. The second function of the kidney is the regulatory function. First, the kidney regulates water balance, meaning even if you drink more water, more water will be removed from a body. Less water you drink, kidneys retain more water in a body, preventing dehydration. The second regulatory function is the control of electrolyte balances like sodium, potassium, chloride, bicarbonate, calcium, and of course acid-base balance as well. As for endocrine function of the kidney, the first hormone secreted by kidney is erythropoietin. This hormone is secreted by endothelial cells in pertubular capillary bed. It is important to note that erythropoietin controls erythropoiesis or red blood cell production in a bone marrow. These cells are very sensitive to oxygen level of the blood. Under hypoxic conditions, these cells produce more erythropoietin for the facilitating erythropoiesis. The second endocrine function of the kidney is activating vitamin D. First, the parathyroid hormone acts on the proximal convoluted tubule cells and then hydroxylates 25-hydroxyvitamin D to form the active form of vitamin D. Vitamin D can act on kidney, intestine, and bone to regulate calcium homeostasis. The third endocrine function of the kidney is renin secretion. This enzyme is produced by juxtaglomerular cells. The juxtaglomerular cells are specialized smooth muscle cells, mainly in the walls of the afferent arterioles and some in the efferent arterioles that deliver blood to the glomerulus. Renin regulates blood volume, blood pressure, and electrolyte balance. Finally, the fourth endocrine function of the kidney is prostaglandin secretion. Prostaglandins are vasodilators and serve to contract primarily angiotensin II mediated vasoconstriction acting at the level of the arterioles and glomerular mesangial cells.
During a stress state, the increase in sympathetic tone causes vasoconstriction of the afferent arterioles. The same stimuli activate a local production of prostaglandins. Prostaglandins lead to vasodilation of the afferent arterioles, thus modulating the vasoconstriction. The long use of such medications like non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs can block the synthesis of prostaglandins leading to constriction of afferent arterial, decreasing renal plasma flow, which in turn decreases glomerular filtration rate. This may result in acute renal failure. And finally, let's talk about the metabolic function of the kidney. The first and important metabolic function of the kidney is ammoniogenesis, which has an important role in acid-base homeostasis. Also, during starvation, the kidney has the ability to produce glucose through gluconeogenesis. And final question, please explain the reason for the occurrence of anemia in a patient with chronic renal failure.